Hey guys, welcome back to the Nurse Bros Podcast. This is Tyler. And this is Josh. So how how you doing, man? I'm good. We're back in the studio after like six months. True, I know while. scheduling's been an issue, unfortunately, but we're we're finding some time. Yeah, of course. We'll get them out. Just gotta give us some time, but we'll get there. We just want to thank everybody. We're almost actually at 200 followers on Facebook, and not to mention all the plays we're getting on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and all that stuff, so we just all want to thank you place. again. It's like people listening to platforms I didn't even know existed. We still know the video thing, which we're working with. We'll get to it. That's a season two special. Everyone wants it. They want to see your luscious hair. It's going longer by the moment. <laughs> it is Down really your knees. long. I'm just going to let it go. I don't even want to cut it anymore. You want some dreadlocks or something? No, I just want a really long man bun to ride 2020 out, the sunset, into 2021. It flows behind you on your mountain bike. You don't even wear a helmet because your hair just protects you. <laughs> well, today we just wanted to have kind of a light discussion about why we chose to become nurses. And we got some questions from our Facebook audience as well that we'll read off during this episode yeah yeah definitely definitely some good insight from these comments we got so that'll be fun to go over So, Josh, why did you want to become a nurse? It's kind of a cliche answer, but I've always liked helping people and making a difference in that regard. And nursing seemed to be the best way to get to the direct line of patient care. It's kind of the one thing that sets it apart from, like, radiology and other things like that. It's just you're right at the bedside, which comes with its positives and negatives. But at the end of the day, you're still making an impact on these people when you're right up there 12 hours a day assisting them especially when you hit those those three in a rows <laughs> three twelves <laughs> in a rows rough yeah but um, you know and interestingly enough that's when you really see when you have the same patients in the same group for a certain amount of time like three days in a row you really get to see the fruits of your assistance or whatever the case especially if they're super sick and you've had to make calls or things like that it really does scratch that helping itch you know i like so that, i mean that was the main driver i do believe this without a shadow of doubt. If you get into this profession of nursing with anything other than wanting to help people, you'll be burnt out very, very quickly because it's a very stressful job. It's not a light hand-holding job where you just kind of coast around for 12 hours. You're very busy and it's not just activities it's dealing with people you don't sit at the nurse's station and play cards all day (laughs) with my nursing stethoscope (laughs) (laughs) yeah i i'm a people person so i i like just the interaction with so many different people i mean some obviously are nicer than others but right it's interesting just meeting a bunch of people and like you said when you have the three days in a row it's it's nice to build a rapport If you have nice patients, it's nice to build a rapport with them. And the next day, hey, I'll be back tomorrow. And then, oh, okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Great. Or are you back tomorrow? Because they're excited. They actually want to spend. It's not easy being in the hospital by any means whatsoever. So just knowing that you have a close relationship with your nurse or, or you with the patient, it always makes it worth coming back the next day. Yeah, definitely. Do you feel you have to be a people person to be a good, effective nurse? I don't think so. I feel you just have to respect people, and I don't think you mm-hmm. necessarily have to be a people person for that. I mean, everyone should be able to show another person respect. Yeah, because I, I am not a people person, funnily enough, and here I am in a profession where all I do is <laughs> deal with people, but it's almost like a switch in a sense, and at the end of the day, I like to turn off that. It's not like two-faced, but it is a persona that you have to put out when you're dealing with people at least in my case, when I'm dealing with these patients, then I can kind of recharge after. Gotta be professional. Like, growing up, I was super, super shy. So here I am dealing with people around the clock. It's a funny contrast from just what you would expect of me if you if you knew of me. The heck, bro? Shy? You're, you're a freaking podcaster. You're a famous, right. famous podcaster, bro. I saw you on YouTube. <laughs> We're famous. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be shy. No, but I, I, I hear you, though. One thing I like about it, too is just the 
independence of it as well. I mean, obviously you have higher ups and people you have to answer to, but it's nice that you have your skill set, you learned in school, you do all your precepting, and you're thrusted right into it. Mm-hmm. And throughout the day, as long as you get your stuff done, I mean, you're not really answering to anybody but the patients. And as long as you know what you're doing, you're fine. It's very, it's nice. It's independent. You get there, you do your med, you pass your meds, do your charting, take care of what they need, coordinate with the doctors, other people in the hospital. And not a lot of jobs are independent like that. Mm-hmm. You know, like a stuffy office job where everything you do has to be micromanaged and talk to about a manager. So I kind of like that, just being like a, a independent person too, because we know what we're doing. As long as you know what you're doing, it's it's nice. I will say it's you kind of like you said, you develop your skills. You're on your own, and you're kind of like okay. So you get to choose how this day is gonna go. You choose to an extent when you're gonna pull your meds, things like that. You choose how you want to pass, how you want to time manage. Everything's very self-driven in that regard. Very much independent. And that can vary wildly between nursing styles, things like that. If, yes, of course, there's directives. There's whiteboards. Other things that come from the top that I feel like are micromanaging, but it's not directly... It's there for a reason. It's always... It, there's a directive behind it. There's a reason they want the whiteboards. And you can appease them whoever it's an administration and it's all over the place it's not embedded to one hospital pointless as it may seem you answer to those directives then you're pretty much left alone as long as you're taking good care of your patients yeah yeah i agree we've been yelled at a time or two for our (laughs) for our lack of (laughs) whiteboard communication but try to do the best you can it's hard to do everything you can even in a 12-hour shift so much going Mm -hmm. on my pathway was i you know, I played baseball my whole life in sports and stuff, and I didn't care. I was like anybody else. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going pro, whatever. Going pro. I don't need school. <laughs> school sucks. I went away to college first year and just <laughs> surrounded myself. Not the best people, and I was also at a business school, so I was not interested in anything in the classroom, and I never thought about really what I wanted to do. I was just like, oh, I'll play baseball, whatever, ride it out four years, and go from there it wasn't until basically flunking out coming back home because in a sense i I was definitely just becoming a loser (laughs) so i'll be blunt about it coming Mm -hmm. back home you know going going to local college and i was like well you know nursing i'll always have a job whatever it's science cool stuff but Mm -hmm. it wasn't until actually doing it and really setting my mind to the sciences and, and the health science program that I was like, wow, I really enjoy this. And I've always liked helping people. I never thought to portray that into a career. Right. So it's, it's nice to be able to do that. And once I finished, which I had a hole I had to dig out of, I had like a two GPA. <laughs> I had to retake <laughs> classes. I had to, I had like 15 classes I had to get A's in. Otherwise, I was never going to get into the program. So it was a lot of knit and grit studying that I've never had to do before. Hmm. So finally I was able to get in and listen, I, I'll argue with anybody. Nursing school was the hardest thing <laughs> I think anyone has had to do in, it was in their life. It was getting up at four in the morning, driving hour long <laughs> ways to get to clinical. Mm-hmm. It was definitely a test of mental strength too. Yeah, it definitely was, was not an easy time. It was a lot of weird, almost welcome to the cult of nursing. Now here's your hazing. Yeah, you know. I, a lot of it I feel like was just, I mean, obviously classroom stuff was difficult and then clinical learning, all that. But a lot of it I feel was like just weeding out the week in a sense. It's like you got to be yeah. up at 430. We get to this clinical site at 545, even though none of the nurses are getting there until 645. Just to, you know, just to get there. I feel like it was just all extra. It really, it's it's regimented in a way. Interesting structure, but you definitely notice in nursing school, the, the cult of nursing that is mm-hmm. thrust upon you. Here's your nursing diagnosis. Here's this and that. And you process all that. You get through it and then you get to the actual field. And you're like, wow, some of that was, a lot of that was useless, but here we are. It was just base so you could pass NCLEX. It's kind of like certain math equations that I'm never going to use in my life, but you have to learn them to get through the Hmm. class. Very similar. (laughs) Just want to fix your impaired energy field with therapeutic touch. (laughs) Exactly. And, you know, now a lot of it, and we had to do handwrite a lot of that stuff too, like 10-page care plans and 
Now, I mean, it's just embedded in the charting on the computer. Yeah, exactly. You click a button. And again, we talked about directives earlier. You click a button, trailer care plan, and that satisfies whatever directive the corporation or whatever hospital you work for wants. You know, it's interesting. The majority of our work is helping people. Then there's a, maybe 10% at the top that's just appeasing I, will, I, I have not worked anywhere else besides a hospital yet. So I would like to see what other things are like, you know, maybe even doing government nursing or home health, just to see the difference. But I see there are some positives and the negatives of working in a hospital. The negatives is just it, at the end of the day, money, revol- you know, it, it, age cap scores, things like that. So a lot of your care has to do with that. And it's hard to separate the, well, we need a good score from this person as, you know, but also caring for everybody and doing what you can with certain amount of resources. I feel like we we can talk for aeons about how medicine has changed and how the healthcare environment is changing and becoming service oriented and stuff like that and avoiding the word patient you know client i I think it takes it takes the personal touch out of it in a sense which is the beauty of nursing is you had to be you have to be a somewhat good person to just want to care for people Mm -hmm. and i think now with it geared towards more service oriented you can lose that you can lose that personal aspect of it which Mm -hmm. can possibly in the future hinder the profession in in, in itself i definitely i think COVID has kind of thrown that for a loop in a sense like the personal aspect like at work is stressful definitely on edge kind of want to keep your distance it's easy to become more clinical in nature you very much use your antibiotics all of that stuff but when you're caring for the people you still want to retain the actual connection i definitely agree with that similar to going to Publix or something you, mm-hmm. you go into the store it's like you don't want to be near anyone you just want to strike do force stuff and swat go. team yeah it's like me and sam <laughs> when we go in the store it's like all right this is what we're getting We go here, here, and here. We check out and go. I don't want to be near anyone. I don't want to touch anything I don't need to touch. You even got your SWAT helmet. The thing's bulletproof. (laughs) Hey, I I, I was wearing that in March, and everyone made fun of me. Oh, what do you need that welder's helmet for? (laughs) (laughs) Now it's funny. Half the hospital has asked me where we got that thing, and then I Mm -hmm. see them the next day with the same thing on. Yep. So it's funny how, you know, in the beginning, people aren't taking things seriously. And all of a sudden, what was once funny becomes a trend and the style now. For the listeners, what we're referring to is uh, Tyler's got this bulky (laughs) welder's hat, face shield apparatus. Huge, but... He's not wrong. Everyone wants to know where he got it. It's huge. It looks huge, but it's actually more comfortable than anything we've been given that is Mm -hmm. a fraction of the size. So, hey, I'll I'll ride that out until I retire. It'll last (laughs) another 30 years. (laughs) I'm ready. When we're we're still dealing with COVID in 2050. We got to take that on the bike trails, man. That way I can can wear it. It protects the flies as I'm going I was going to say the flies. I don't know if it's much in the way of head protection, though. I don't think so. I'll probably still crack my skull. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we asked a question on our Facebook page just for all of our healthcare workers, why you guys chose healthcare for your career, and then all the non-healthcare workers, what are the most important qualities that you would like for your nurse to have if you were a patient in the hospital? A few people left some. Our, our friend Taylor said... Who's that? Who's Taylor? You, you know Taylor. Taylor's our, she's our good friend nurse. She she left us. She moved to a bigger, better floor for more Different experience. World. Different world, yeah. Actually, she's COVID floor now, so she's... She's grinding down there. God bless her. She said she knew she wanted to be a nurse when I had to go to the ER at eight years old for stitches. The nurse made me comfortable by holding my hand and even gave me a stuffed animal to calm me down. I never forgot about her. Something so small made the biggest difference in my care that day and my life. Wow. that's See, that's the kind of nurse you want to be. Someone mm-hmm. who can literally send someone down a career path at eight years old just because of how kind they were. Definitely. And especially at that, at that age, being in the ER is scary. So yeah, you, you want to strive to be like that. It's funny. You don't really, at least in the floor, really talk about these moments. They're, they're unspoken in a way. And it almost feels taboo to be like, oh yeah, I sat there and hugged that patient when they were crying or things like that mm-hmm. like you don't say that you just kind of do it it's kind of it feels like it's just something you should do you know right. it doesn't need praise 
and that's what nursing is. A lot of the stuff, 90% of it is unrecognized that we do, yeah, but that, it, you're doing for it sure. for yourself, for the patient, but, right. uh, but to add, Taylor's very good nurse. Shout out to her too, because she's also a nurse practitioner school, and she will be a great nurse practitioner. She's, she's, she's super smart. She's a, she's a pro. Good luck to her and her endeavors going down the road. Listen, oh, this, yeah. is, this is your mom's comment. I'm, I'm letting you. I, I don't remember this. Oh, but no. she, she says when I was a kid, I always liked to get the plastic skeletons out of the candy machines, uh, the ones that glow in the dark. When I was eight or nine, I asked for a skeleton, like the display skeletons that you find out like a doctor's office or school. I apparently really, really wanted one. <laughs> and there was <laughs> a, actually, now that she talks about it, got me one that was like a plastic, like a Halloween type skeleton, not medical, but somewhat like that. I, I kind of, I think I do remember that. <laughs> I don't know why I was so obsessed with that, but <laughs> yeah, here I am now in, in medical science. See, you were paving the way. I know. Your 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 odd interest in skeletons. <laughs> the way for you to care for anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> now that we twist that, uh oh. Oh I got skeleton skeletons in my closet. Lily said she chose nursing as a young girl. She watched every episode of every medical show in the late sixties and seventies. I love the science aspect of each episode, and I love the nurse's role. I could not wait to be in a hospital setting. Basically, just being exposed to TV and, and things like that. She says she loved the nurse-patient relationship, providing care and comfort, and new nursing was my calling. And that's kind of what we touched on, just that one-on-one. -on -one. Do you like medical shows? Uh, I find <laughs> them very unrealistic and drama-filled now. I obviously don't know back in the day what what shows they had on but i find like everyone focuses on things that are just very outlandish and drama centered to kind of get an audience i, I yeah definitely i de don't deny that i Dude, definitely do am i like which i wish was coming back soon but covid put a hold on that too they're kind of like guilty pleasures because if you have any any like level of medical knowledge you can always pick apart certain parts of it but if you can suspend that disbelief they're they're entertaining so and i could definitely see like watching them growing up and then wanting to get in that field definitely good point <laughs> and then jade which jade was my preceptor after josh she molded you she did she, jo josh got me I, got me primed and jade like you know got the rough edges away now basically. here you are now you're like a plant growing she said it wasn't her first choice but surprisingly she loved it she jade's from the philippines so she talks about how her training was very different and their bsn degree was just four straight years which now it's it's odd depending on what school you go to. You get your two year, you could do your four year, do your two year, you go back for your BSN. It's it really just depends on what school you go to now. She said in her second year they were already exposed in a hospital setting, hands on. She already had her own patients to take care of. Nursing skills wow. were already de yeah, that's crazy when she was still a student. She started delivering babies in her third year of school. Wow. <laughs> mm. the, well, that's why she's so good. She had these experiences so she young. She is, yeah. It was actually mandatory for us to assist in deliveries and surgeries to be able to graduate and take our board exam. Those experiences alone developed my love for the nursing profession. My interest in nursing and my commitment to the field became even stronger. Main source of inspiration was from an innate desire to help people and care for them in times of need. That's, I feel like all nurses have some semblance of that. I mean, I'm sure there's not, but... The majority, I feel like it's a calling that mm -hmm. you, you want to do. And she said, goes on to say, she's been a nurse for 29 years. It's not just a profession, it's a vocation. There are days that are really tough, but I know that I'm here to stay because I want to make a difference in my patients' lives. Well, she definitely does. She's, again, another she, one of she's a kind, a, great she, nurse. She goes above and beyond for her patients. So, yeah, and this experience shows, like what she's saying, definitely compassion is the heart. she never complains either. No, she no doesn't. No matter how crappy of a day she's having, she's always happy. Always singing. <laughs> True. <laughs> oh, and then and then Sam. Sam, Sam had oh a, boy. Sam had a week this week. <laughs> yeah, so, of, of of all the experiences, I I get a call. I'm at work. This is last Friday. I get a call. I'm like, oh, she's she's calling to say hi. That's nice. <laughs> she's she's bawling her eyes out on the other end of the phone, and apparently. Long story short, she was attacked by a squirrel in our neighborhood, and I guess it bit her. She threw it away, threw it off her. It came back, bit her again, and then she kicked it across the parking lot, and it came back and bit her again. 
So we call animal. She she calls me. I I run home. I leave work real quick. Try to make sure she's okay. And she she was fine. She got bit a few times. Nothing major. So we call animal control just to get a good idea of what what we should do. Apparently, so this is a little educational here. Rodents are not known to carry or transmit rabies to humans. It's never happened apparently in medical history, which is nice and comforting. So he was like, "But go to the ER. You probably need antibiotics and just take a look at the bites because they can carry other diseases and bacteria." in their saliva. Sam's post is referring to just having a good bedside manner because at the emergency room, I dropped her off at my hospital. I ran down there. One of the practitioners came in, basically told her, if you get the rabies shot, you could die. If you get rabies and don't get the shot, you will die. So it wasn't very helpful. And she was like, but it's your decision to make. Well, we're in the emergency room seeking care from professionals who have been doing this for quite a long time, paying more money than anyone should to go see these people, and it's your choice. Well, if it was our choice to make, we never would have came. Finally, the doctor came in and, and made Sam feel a lot better, made us feel a lot better. He said, you know, I, I'm fine sending you home without the shot because I'm 140% certain you don't have rabies from this bite. You're not going to get infected, but I do want you to take antibiotics for possible infection. So that that was that whole scenario. It was super stressful, but that's just a good indication of how poor bedside manner and just just management of how a patient is feeling because you know you're obviously distressed and you don't know no one really expects to be attacked by anything so you go seek medical advice from people who have the education and authority to kind of say this is what you need you're fine go home the other practitioner just kept saying i can't tell you what to do i can't tell you what to do well, doctor came right in and said, listen, if it was me, I wouldn't get the shot. And Not for any other reason that you don't need it. That's the hard part about being in the medical field is you have to you have to be fluid with who you're dealing with as, as a provider, as a nurse, whoever. You can't just, and it's hard for people to, to change who they come off as. Certain patients, you have to be, you know, like in this case, that you know, it's all about how the practitioner presented the information to Sam and how rigid and firm that was. And that doesn't always work for everyone. Some people may like that. Some people may, may be like, well, that's not my choice to tell you what decision you make. You got to make up, make that for yourself. Some people respond better to be like, well, in this case, I would do X, Y, Z. Reaffirms bedside manner is super important, but also being able to adjust that manner to who you're dealing with. We want to thank everyone for just their comments and just staying involved. We do appreciate it. We like the interaction with you guys. And again, throw ideas for topics and things we could talk about on our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash the nurse bros. You might and even get to see Tyler singing. Like, <laughs> oh no, oh no. <laughs> like those other people. And listen, before we go, I just, we did that episode with Ariel a couple weeks ago. And I, I spoke with her a couple of days ago. She was kind of updating me on everything. And she did say already two higher up employees at the school have already tested positive hmm. and and a few students. So what we thought was happening would happen. So Yeah, it, and it's it not it's not just here, it's all over the nation. Yeah. So Unfortunately. You know, just stay safe, stay masked up. Our numbers are still going down, which is nice. So but let's keep that trend going and keep each other safe. It's all about staying vigilant because the moment we start to relax is when <laughs> we'll have we'll have another wave as fall approaches too so hopefully we're we're good we'll we'll keep you updated on the facebook page with some things to come as soon as we figure out scheduling we have a few guests in the pipeline and a few other topics we want to talk about thank you for joining us today thank you thanks we, again we will, for listening yeah we will talk to you soon this, this is tyler signing off here and this is josh bye, bye guys